Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. These are exciting times at the Carnegie Science Center on Pittsburgh's North Shore. A $21 million expansion is underway to provide more space for traveling exhibitions and education, including nine STEM learning labs. And just a few weeks from now, our region's top scientists and science educators will be honored with the Carnegie Science Awards. Uh, Ann Metzger and Ron Bailey are back with us. They are the Henry J. Buell Jr. co-directors of the Carnegie Science Center. Welcome back. Good to see Thank you both. Thank you. It's good, good to be, to be here. back. Yeah, since you've been here, big project underway. They're moving dirt over there on the North Shore, right? We are moving a lot of dirt on the North Shore, and we're, we actually have broken ground for our new science pavilion that will have a complete suite of new STEM learning labs, the traveling exhibition gallery, as you said, and a beautiful conference and event space that overlooks the point. Wow, so a lot more space to be able to do the things you all do? You know, to be able to bring in uh, great exhibitions uh, that are traveling North America but don't come to Pittsburgh right now is really important for us. Hmm. And, and so that's been an issue? You haven't been able to pick up? We don't get some of the exhibitions other communities That's do? exactly right. The facility where we used to be able to do that are actually in the parcel of land across from the Science Center and that building was raised when the light rail uh, oh. station was put in and so we've lacked a space like this. So we're creating a 14 thousand square foot uh, premier event space to Smithsonian standards to bring in the great exhibits that, can, that travel through uh, through North America and can now come to Pittsburgh. That's right. I think we have an image of the Joel. There it is, as a matter of fact. So that's how it's going to look, right? So that's what are exactly we seeing right. there uh, on the on the Pittsburgh end, on the city end of the Science Center? So right? what, what you're seeing there, you're seeing some renderings of that gallery uh, inside. You're seeing a classroom space. Um, you're seeing both outdoor and indoor space of our new science pavilion that we expect to be open in June of 2018. Now, June of 2018, so we got to wait all the way until the middle of next year before we get to experience any of this new You know, stuff? that feels really close to us. <laughs> <laughs> 14 <laughs> months, and there's a lot that to do. Actually is not really now, you don't have far. to wait that long to experience some of the new things that are happening oh, okay. at the Science Center because we are planning to open a new laser digital theater this Thanksgiving as well. By Thanksgiving? Great. So this is what where the where the Omnimax was before. Yeah. This is where the Omnimax was. We'll be closing the Omnimax this summer in okay. July, uh, refurbishing the inside, uh, adding a whole new projection system, and bringing state-of-the-art theater to uh, to our space in Thanksgiving at Thanksgiving. Well, I remember when the when the Science Center first opened, your theater was probably the most state-of-the-art, fanciest movie theater in the whole region. But nowadays we have all these multiplexes in the suburbs with their stadium seating and their uh, fancy projection techniques. So it's really hard to stay ahead of that curve. Well, our theater is still the largest screen in Pittsburgh, the wow. most immersive experience, we believe, and will continue to be so as we upgrade it to the laser digital system. Okay, something to think about as folks are welcoming family home for the holidays, Thanksgiving Absolutely. and on into Absolutely. Christmas. Absolutely. That's a great time of year to be able to open the new theater. Um, but more uh, coming up a lot sooner, of course, is the Carnegie Science Awards. That's what, just about three weeks away at this about point? About three weeks away, and this was our, it's our 21st year of honoring those who, leaders of science, technology, and education in the region. Has it been 21 years? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, it's hard to believe. Well, it's amazing, and, and you know, such a wealth of both education as well as science to honor. Any, any highlights this year that really come to mind you're really excited about? Oh, there's some tremendous stories. Um, um, we, have a, we have a young person, actually a, a middle schooler, who's done incredible research on Alzheimer's. Hmm. And, a middle uh, schooler? Was, was really uh, kind of sparked by seeing a grandparent move into dementia and decided they wanted to explore what are, the, what are some of the causes and what do we know about Alzheimer's and how to avoid it. And so that's a middle school student. The high school student is going to be presenting work um, that he's done uh, looking at uh, uh, kidney disease and how mm. kidney disease can be uh, can be studied through looking at the kidneys of zebra mussels uh, in the ocean and to be able to then look at what are the what are the actually the intrinsic characteristics of kidneys that actually can fight off kidney disease that actually can spark the kidney to resist disease. And this is a high school student. It's a high school student. On. That it's is a great so cool. story. So uh, many of our uh, awardees this year also are involved in the environmental space mm -hmm. and, and environmental sustainability. And so, um, you know, we're very, very proud to see that represented. Um, but one of the one one of the awardees that stood out for me is a middle school teacher, a gym teacher, who actually uses gym gym class 
to teach about the biomechanics of the body mm -hmm. and STEM, ultimately. And so he has these kids very much engaged in STEM fields, showing that the interdisciplinary nature of education is really, really important. Wow, really creative and innovative stuff in the way it's taught, not just in the innovation uh, behind the science. Exactly. Only a little bit of time left. Every now and then, the Science Center awards a chairman's award uh, to honor something, somebody, some organization or individual really special in the community. You're going to do that again this year? We are going to do that this year. We do not give the chairman's award every year, only in those years when we feel that it's really, we have a worthy um, uh, recipient and this year the award goes to Chevron mm. for its extraordinary contributions to our region over the past um, eight years or so um, relative to STEM education. Mm -hmm. They've really been a leader in funding really not just the Science Center's programs but programs at the Children's Museum and programs that encourage workforce development um, throughout the region. It's really so throughout the whole tri-state area. Throughout the whole yeah. tri-state It is, area. supporting schools all through Western PA, Northern West Virginia. Uh, they have so many opportunities that they've made for schools, particularly in rural areas, to be able to take advantage of STEM. and. Uh, we're delighted to be able to recognize Chevron in that regard. That's terrific. The date is when? May 12th. May 12th? Still selling tickets? Friday, May 12th. Come to the Carnegie Science Center website for more information. All right. Ann Metzger, Ron Bailey from the Carnegie Science Sec uh, Center. Congratulations on everything that's happening over there. We'll see you on the uh, 12th. Thank right. you. We'll see you May Thank 12th. you. Right. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah. And we'll be back in a minute with a little dollars and cents. Stay with us.